Okay, so this lesson is about drugs. Okay, so just a quick recap um, from the last lesson. I want to answer these questions. What would you find on the surface of a pathogen? What do white blood cells produce? Okay, and what does a vaccine contain? So pause the video, answer those questions. Okay, so what would you find on the surface of a pathogen? Antigens. What do white blood cells produce? Antibodies, okay? This should all be what you remember from the last lesson. What does a vaccine contain? A small amount of dead or inactive pathogens, okay? Right, so the first task, okay? I just want you to fill in the missing words, okay? So I'm going to pause, so pause the video now. And then we'll go through the answer in a second. Okay, so should I finish that by now? A drug is a substance taken into the body that modifies or affects chemical reactions. Some drugs are beneficial, while others are harmful. The development of new medicines. So traditionally, drugs were extracted from plants and microorganisms. Okay, so the heart drug digitalis actually comes from foxgloves which are um, common UK plants. Uh, the painkiller aspirin originates from the, the willow tree. The antibiotic penicillin was discovered by Alexander Fleming from the penicillin mould, okay, which is another common mould. Okay, what do painkillers do? You need to use the blue words to fill in the gaps on the green boxes, okay? So add, put the blue words into the green boxes, okay? Once you've done that, you need to write down as many examples of painkillers as you can think of. Okay, pause the video and do that now. So, painkillers help relieve the symptoms of an infection. They do not kill pathogens. Okay, so that, that, all that's saying is, so if you've got a headache, they relieve your headache. Okay, they won't kill kill the, the bacteria or the viruses, okay, they just help you feel better. Okay, so two, example, two examples that you should know are um, paracetamol and ibuprofen, they're the most common, common ones you'll find at home. Okay, so antibiotics. What I want you to do again is use the four word to fill in the blanks, okay, copy that down. Okay, so antibiotics such as penicillin are medicines that kill bacteria inside the body. Specific bacteria should be treated with specific antibiotics. There are now strains of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. Okay, so what that means is um, you can only use certain uh, antibiotics to kill certain bacteria. Okay, so if you if you've got one type of bacteria, it's only it will only be killed by certain antibiotics. Antibiotics won't kill every type of bacteria. Okay, there's some bacteria now that is resistant to antibiotics. That means those antibiotics do not affect it, okay? So things like MRSA, okay, things like superbugs, which means it's very difficult um, to treat. An important thing that you need to know about antibiotics is that they cannot kill viruses, okay? They only are effective against bacteria. It's difficult to develop drugs that kill viruses without also damaging the body's tissues. So how do we stop diseases from spreading? Okay. We use the acronym DIET. That is destroy the vector or pathogen, isolate infected individuals, educate people on how to avoid the disease and treat infected individuals. Destroy the vector or pathogen. You can either destroy the virus or the pathogen directly or in the case of malaria, um, if you destroy the vector. Okay, so if you destroy the mosquitoes, then you prevent the spread of malaria as it spreads through the mosquitoes who then infect humans. Isolate infected individuals. Okay, that means keeping people apart, keeping them separate so that you cannot transmit the disease from person to person. Okay, so the disease cannot, cannot um, carry on its life cycle. Uh, educate people on how to avoid the disease. So, for example, in the case of malaria, um, you would educate people about sleeping with mosquito nets, which will stop the mosquitoes from being able to bite them um, at night and stop the spread. Okay, and then lastly, you need to treat infected individuals. Okay, because if the infected individuals, um, you wouldn't want to leave them to die, you wouldn't want to leave them 
uh, walking around infecting everyone. Okay, so that is diet. So, just been through that really quick. I need to pause the video and copy it down. You should be able to remember um, what diet stands for. Okay, pause the video and fill this, fill in the blanks. Okay, so you've got the words at the bottom in case you've forgotten. Now we're going to put them in. So, destroy the vectors and pathogens, isolate infected individuals, educate people on how to avoid the disease, and treat infected individuals. In drug testing, there are three main stages. Okay, there is the testing on cells in the lab, testing on animals in the lab again, and then testing on humans. The stage where you test it on cells and animals is known as a preclinical stage and that the next part when you test it on humans is the clinical the clinical stage so the first part the preclinical um, phase you checking for toxicity is it going to kill the cell that's being tested on then when you start doing clinical trials um, you give the scientists give a small amount of the drug to healthy volunteers and then monitor them for side effects Every drug will have side effects, but what you want is that those side effects are not worse than the disease you're trying to cure. You can actually get paid money to be involved in um, a clinical trial, okay, if you're a healthy person, but there are still risks, okay, Potent potentially you could become ill, potentially, you know, you could actually die, although it would be very, very unlikely because of the preclinical checks they make sure that it's pretty much safe for the clinical trials phase so then the next phase the scientists give the drug to patients okay people who are actually ill with the disease that they're trying to cure to check that the, for the correct dose and to check that the drug actually works only some patients get the drug there, others get a placebo. This is to check if the drug really works. So, I'd like you to pause the video and answer what is a placebo. Okay, so placebo is something that looks the same as the actual drug on the outside, but there is no actual drug in there. It's probably just a sugar tablet. Okay, but the patients do not know which is which. So half of the patients will get the drug, half of them will get the placebo. This is to see, to check that the drug really does work. Because if the if the drug group, um, they show the same amount of improvement as the placebo group, that means the drug is not really working. Whereas if the drug if the drug group shows massive improvement compared to the placebo group. Then it shows you that the drug is actually doing what it's supposed to do. So, why doesn't the doctor know who has the placebo and who has the real drug? So, pause the video and write down an answer. Okay, so the doctors do not know in case they have um, a bias, okay, a, a subconscious bias. This means that they might want certain results and might might look at things differently so if they don't know which one is placebo and which one is a drug then it makes things a lot fairer only the scientists conducting the experiment will know which patients have the drug and which patients will have the placebo and the last part of this process is the peer review this means that the process the entire process is checked by doctors and other professionals in the same profession to check that the process is fair and correct and safe. Peer review also helps to prevent false claims. This could be that the drug does things that it doesn't actually do or that people could be saying that the drug has no, none or limited side effects. So, what you need to do is match up the links, okay? So link up the first, second, and third to the three um, small sentences. Okay, 
Okay, so the first part is testing on cells and animals. The second part is on healthy volunteers. And the third part is on patients. I'd like to pause the video now and then link up the reasons why. Okay, so we check on healthy volunteers. Okay, so Okay, so we check on cells and animals to check it is not toxic. We check on healthy volunteers to check for side effects. And then on patients to check for the dosage, the correct dosage. 